says that he's biased. And so uh, what I like is that Trump made it very clear that the case is is garbage because the plaintiff and her lawyers asked that she be removed from the case because they couldn't win with her. She knew they couldn't win. The lawyers knew they couldn't win, but the lawyers wanted to continue and the judge refused to, the, to d- dismiss the case. Now, here, here's what he was saying. This is literally what Trump said. If the plaintiff... The person the, coming against me. Yeah, if, if uh, let's say, uh, Joe uh, Schmo wants to sue Brian over here and the lawyers get involved and they're like, all right, we're suing him. And then the plaintiff says, nah, you know what, I'm out. And the lawyers say, well, you know what? We want to keep going. The judge should look at this and say, whoa, guys, 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 guys. The plaintiff's out. This case is over. The judge said, all right, well, let's keep going then. Yeah. Because the lawyers are involved. And speaking about this plaintiff, they won't even put her on the stand, and she won't even testify about this whole thing. And you are listening to Smith Radio. Uh, It's smythradio.com. You can find us all over the place. You can find us on Facebook.com backslash Smith Radio, on Twitter at Smith Radio. If you want to be a part of the show, call in 513-888-1538. Make it brief, make it short, and make it count. And we're talking about Trump U, uh, Trump University. The, the scandal. The, the whole right. thing that the, the left is trying to drum up. Right. And there's some dirty right. dealings on this judge, though. So let me back up a little bit okay. here. Just a little bit, just to make sure that you guys are all clear. Trump could have settled this a long time ago. And he was asked, why didn't you? These are people that hate him, by the way. Uh, Why didn't you just settle this? And Trump has said, because I'm sticking to my principles. I'm right. I'm going to win this case. This is an unwinnable case for the other side, for the plaintiff and the lawyers and the judge. Uh they can't win. I know they can't win because I'm right. Uh, and he goes on and on about how all these um, students right. love the university. I got thousands. He said he has thousands of letters from the, uh, from the They're actually reviews okay. that give glowing reviews to his uh, university. And these are students, former students. Trump used the P word, though. Principled. Yeah, he did actually say that. And and the the media and the left looked at him and said, Huh? What's that what's that it's got to do little, with it's anything? About the principality. What's that got to do with anything? <laughs> Come on, man. Throw that principle out the window. We did. Apparently, <laughs> yeah. So so I thought it was cool. So now here's the big question. Why won't the judge drop the case? Do you want to hear what Lou, Lou Dobbs has to say? Yeah, why won't he drop this case? Lou Dobbs this week had a really deep inside uh, information on that judge. Oh, wow. The federal judge presiding over the California cases is Judge Gonzalo Curiel, Curiel. an Obama appointee. What? How political is he? He had ordered a hearing on the first day of the Republican National Convention. But he recanted on that after news outlets took note of his blatant motive. And one of the law firms representing the plaintiffs, I can't tell you if it's two, three, or four, or five, Robbins, Geller, Rudman, and Dowd is the firm, and they paid the Clintons almost $700,000 in speaking fees since 2009. I mean, that's a lot of talking, even by lawyer standards, and it includes speeches made by the Clintons while the lawsuit has been underway. Now that might to some laymen seem like a conflict of interest, but but not for the law. Of course, Hillary Clinton today trying to capitalize on the lawsuits, saying they're proof that Trump is a doggone fraud. Well, doggone is my word. Then after taking the law firm's money and lots of it. Now that's audacity and lots of it. So to put this right, this judge was an Obama appointee this judge attempted to uh, get this this uh, case out in the light of day, if you will, or kind of advertise it during the Republicans uh, candidates coming out and, and starting to run. And the law for, firm representing the girl or the, the, the plaintiff, has paid speaking fees to seven hundred thousand dollars to the Clinton Foundation. I thought it was several times, wasn't it? 
Yeah. So, well, uh, or did it total? Total of okay, $700,000. Gotcha. $700, well, I'm just curious of what kind of kickbacks did that, that law firm get from from the government while Hillary was Secretary of State? And that's why you do it. That's why right. you would do it. Like, hey, let's have Hillary act like she's speaking to us. Because you know, nobody wants to listen to her. And what does she have to say that's so insightful? Not only that, but polls have shown every time she speaks, her numbers go down. When she doesn't speak, her numbers go up. It's just, it's a fact. So we know, based on statistics, that as soon as she, as soon as you hire her to speak, you're like, wow, we blew it. And this company, this law firm, seven hundred rehired her seven hundred several times. Right, right. Wow, because they. They have a different opinion on the entertainment value, we couldn't the get educational it. value of the words that are coming out of her mouth. Yeah, we just couldn't get enough of that. Wow. We needed all of that. So I, my whole take on this is that it does need to go away. Uh, Trump does need to hold his ground. And absolutely, this judge must recuse himself. And the case probably won't go anywhere. And they don't want it to go anywhere. Because they want to keep beating it and beating it and beating it like a dead horse. Because that's all they got on him. And it seems to me like this judge is uh, clearly doing this because it is uh, directly affecting, or he, he hopes, right, he hopes. It's directly affecting the hopes for a Clinton presidency. Right. Because if we can somehow really just scandalize Trump, that's going to help clinton and never mind the fact that she might not even be able to beat sanders that, the the dnc will not allow not allow sanders to be the nominee so sam keels is uh opining in on our uh on our uh, uh comment section and he says that the same law firm works for black live matters and la raza so, <laughs> oh, wow. Probably doing cases for them or whatnot. Well, you know. You, you got to seek them out. Right. And, and the word La Raza means the race. Yeah, that's. In, in L.A., <laughs> there is a radio station called La Raza. Okay. A radio station. Plays Mexican music. You can't have the race. Uh, a show called The Race. No. Where there's all, like, white people. Well, you couldn't have. If you had a show. I mean, there's a BET, Black Entertainment. Television you have a, a WET. No, what? <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> but you couldn't. I, I don't think you could go very long as a, a black business and say we are the race. I I, I, just, I don't see that flying. Uh, and the only reason it would why go a while, it would go a while. I think. And the only reason why it works for La Raza, well, it's it's not English, man. Come on, it's just. It's a Spanish word. It's it don't mean nothing. You just slide it out of the carpet. But if they said the race, it might be a little bit more problematic. Hmm. So, anyways, wow, just too much dirt on this. And and I'm shocked. We talked about this last night with some friends of ours at a get together, and and they were absolutely adamant that she is going to buy this election. The DNC is going to buy the election. I don't see how. Well, they, they can put the money in the right places to, to get the voter fraud to work. What, what, what would they say? Zombie zombie well, there's voters? That, zombie right. voters? But then you also have to get – you have to grease the people who would be the – like the whistleblowers that would say, hey, this guy's dead. You, this, this cannot count. If you <laughs> right. pay that guy off, then he allows all the dead votes to go through. Right. Right. You know? I mean why do you think – California refuses to go excuse me go through a database of dead people and cross reference it with their voter rolls well because that they, they would lose votes yeah but <laughs> if you're the person whose job it is to do that what reason would you have to not start that process because you're, you're getting dimming. paid oh absolutely so that's what you're saying On by the back by end. buying right. buying the election so you're actually just you know, contracting out the voter I mean, fraud. I mean, I'm 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 anticipating every election anywhere, from small 
to general. I've gotten really cynical myself. Right. When it comes I'm, to the I'm legitimacy of, of any election in America now. There's going to be a percentage of of false false voting on the Democrat Party. Well, then they're trying to maximize that. And my my question to you, what is the max percentage of buyout could they get? Well, the thing about it is if you look at the Electoral College or Electoral College, um, you got to win states. Right. And the Democrats have an advantage there because of a lot of the states that are automatic blue. Right. So really all they have to do is focus their fraud on the close swing states because then you only need to do a limited amount of fraud. So like in Ohio – it's usually like a forty nine fifty one, you know, real close. One go to Hamilton another. County and start buying it out. Yeah, Hamilton County is uh, twenty twelve when Obama uh, ran his reelection campaign. I was working at, at a place really close to an um, election office where you go and you vote, mm-hmm. uh, voting office, and there was this multiple white vans that were unmarked. They kept busing. They kept driving in, and they would dump a van load of people off to vote. And they're predominantly black. And then they go back and get another van load. There were like three vans that kept rotating through this election office, this voting office. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, I it mean, could, it could be all on the up and up. It could be, but man, that looks awful. Right. It looks so bad. And yeah. then we find out that that Hamilton County went for. For Obama. And I right. just... Which is why Obama got elected. And I find that hard to believe because by after the first no. four years, people were upset with him. Right. The second... I believe that the, the first uh, election in 2008 of Obama seemed legit. It seemed plausible. Everybody was excited about having the first black president in human history or in uh, American history. And the second one... I mean, if you were really politically involved and paying attention, it seemed impossible that he could win. Right. He was such a failed president for the first four years. Obamacare just got passed to the outrage of most of the American public. Nobody wanted it. Nobody wanted it. If you if you like your doctor, you keep your doctor. No, no, no that was an absolute lie, and they knew it was going to be. A, they knew it wasn't going to be true. They pushed it anyways. They, the DNC, the entire Democrat, uh, socialist, progressive, communist party, lies. They're liars. They lie all the time. And I've put this out many times out on Facebook and and and, and Twitter as well. Prove, show me one single policy, one thing that the Democrat Party has done that has been successful in any measurable way. And it's funny because when they talk about the stuff that they do, they they absolutely tell you the opposite of what the truth is in order to make it sound like what they're doing is successful. Right. Right. And what, I'm not going to get in, but just for an example, uh, a story we got coming up a little bit later on about Obama bashing Trump. He says that, uh, you know, uh, this presidential contest is a choice between Democrat Party committed to working families or Republican Party beholden to China, big oil, yeah, and big it, banks, and the wealthiest Americans. I'm like, what? what? Yeah, that doesn't make any Dude, sense. Dude, that's you guys. That's 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 oh, all you've project, been. Yeah. Well, and, and Rush said this many years ago, probably several times over the years, but whenever you want to figure out what the Democrat Party is doing, listen to what they're accusing the the conservatives of, and that's pretty much oh, what they're doing. Yeah. And, then, that, and then there's your projection. Right. Just absolute insanity. Um, and we get, do you want to go to the other gaffe, if you will, of Trump's gaffe? Yeah, so we just the, – the first gaffe, obviously, just to reiterate – he did. He does not need to go down this road of accusing a judge who's an American citizen that was born in Indiana of bias because he's Mexican and because he's building a wall. There are Mexicans in America that are supporting Trump and supporting his wall. Why would you just assume that because a judge is Mexican that he must be? He must hate me, and you don't go down that road. And it may be true. It may be true. He may be we know uh, pro he, pro uh, 
uh, uh, open borders. This judge may be down with open borders. It's probably true. Right. However, Trump going down the road of he's Mexican.